Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of my CPIG uh, Machine and Krieger video series and I'll be taking you through some basic weathering steps to go from just finishing the paint and the color steps to, uh, to applying some basic weathering. Armed with these techniques and knowledge, I'm sure you'll be able to approach any model, any genre and be able to get wonderful results in a very short period of time. Hope you like it. Let's go. Okay, here's how we're looking. Uh, basic camouflage I, I think is done. I've got my main colors on there. I've also added in some contrast panels. Bright white there. It's actually still off-white because uh, straight pure white would have been crazy in contrast. But even that, it helps to show that base white panels are actually... Because if you look at it like that, they're whitish, right? And you look at it like that, and wow, they're, they're really yellow-green. And uh, boom. I wanted, uh, I wanted to put some different color in there, just in one spot. I like it and dislike it at the same time. But I'm going with it. I did that before in another spacesuit, and I kind of liked it, so I thought it was nifty. Now, weathering tools. When working with these uh, very tough uh, lacquer paints, you can work with some really, you know, some, some physical tools. So I've gone with, uh, this is a Tamiya 400 grit uh, sandpaper, a couple of files, and a knife. I'll start with the knife first, and I'll just show you in a couple of spots. Any of these places where the paint is particularly rough, let's bring it in for a close-up. You can see there, there's a green spot there that's really rough, right? So what I'll do is, I'll just shave that off, if I can. And I just slide it off and cut it off. Probably the gloss made that a little bit hard to see, but what it does is that leaves the underlayers intact. and gives you a very nifty divot. It looks like maybe something like a, like a space buddy, like a... Um, micrometeorite or something has uh, has impacted the surface you gotta imagine that kind of thing happens in space uh, there's a couple of spots where I've got these on here it's a little bit difficult to show up here the camera's having trouble probably because of the brightness of the paint and find a darker spot to show you but uh, mostly I've done a pretty good job so there's, uh, there's one hey, that's a pretty big one maybe you can see it Let me zoom in see on the knee joint there I just slice that off cool not bad next uh, these ones are easy to show. With the underlying layers of paint, this one's got a reasonably sharp edge on it. I can run it across and put in some simulated damage like that. Restraint is important. There we go, and it will bring in some of those underlying Cool. See, sometimes less is more. You don't want to overdo it. You can't go crazy with it. But It's very realistic because, you know, because it's real. There we go. And that leaves the underlying paint. Nifty. There's probably some strong ones can be done on this edge here. There we go. Cool. I'll do a little bit more of them off camera. And with these ones, I buff the surface a little bit. Often I'll wet it. But uh, that's a little bit of a pain in the bum now, I'm doing it in front of the camera. So, readjust it. Just uh, buff in some of these areas that would see a bit of wear. Not too much. And it just smooths out the surface a little bit. And um, you can pinch it up. Make an edge. See, there's a sharp edge there. And again, 
Now, what I do is, is that I work around the model. And uh, it's a little bit hard to do that, think and talk at the same time. So what I do is I work around the model and, uh, and I, I do that at a gradual pace until I get it up to a, what I feel is an acceptable level of, uh, of wear and tear. And we can put another one on the edge. I'll just do some really obvious ones there. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so that's that's one step, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move ahead with that, and uh, I'll show you when it's done. And we're away. I wanted to quickly add this in. I show you how I use clear coats. Now I've done them through an airbrush as well, but I love using this Mr. Color clear coat. They're so fast. Alrighty, he's all decaled up, and a nice gloss coat, so shiny, and uh, ready for first step of weathering. The first thing I like to do is do some panel lining. Uh, it's not super necessary, but um, I figured I could show them in such a way that uh, you could you could uh, move along with each step and then just leave it when you're ready, and uh, that should be fine. So uh, this is probably a reasonably logical way of doing it, but it's not set in stone. You can mix and match them. Um, what I recommend to do with something like this um, is, is putting in an outline. Some people call it a pin loss, uh, pin pin wash, excuse me. Um, so I was thinking that the Japanese one is called sumeri and it's like a, um, it's a lining in would be, uh, would be the best translation for it. Um, if you were just going to get one product, I'd go with something like this, a dark wash. And uh, it's, it's a good all around uh, sort of product that you can use for, for a bunch of different things. But of course we know they've spelt washing correctly. If you're on the interwebs, you know wash is spelt W-O-R-S-H, dark wash. Now because I'm fancy, and this is for a magazine, I'm going to use two. And this is dark brown wash for green vehicles. And um, it's not that it's a big deal, but some different colors and variations on a model will just make it more interesting. So we'll kick off and I'll put them into a small dish. Make it nice and easy. Here we go, you can tell what paints I've been working with. I'll go with dark wash first. Is that joke too old yet? I'm not sure that I've used this one yet, so it might be... These are usually thin enough that I don't need to put in the, uh, I don't need to run them through the tool wash. Tool wash. I usually just give them a bit of a, you know, quick wipe on the paper. Yep, that's good enough. There's a little bit of cross contamination, but don't tell anybody. It'll just be our secret. You, me, and the interwebs. There you go, and this one's a bit thicker on the bottom, so it's a bit more of a mix. You can see it's almost the same color. Don't let them know that Uncle Link told you that this is all the same stuff. And we're away. Now it's super easy to do. Now these ones, sharp brush. This one will do. That's about how big it is on my finger. We'll go with the black one first and you just run it into any details. Now the, the glossiness on this one will help for a couple of reasons. Make sure this is focusing for you, there you go. Gloss helps for a couple of ways. Um, helps the paint to run and uh, protects the decals. The uh, Anything mineral spirits tends to have a bit of a reaction with, uh, with decals. You can go very carefully with this one. I tend to feather it around the model a little bit, so uh, you know, don't be shy. Well, you can go, you can go so far. You can slather it on as well, but I'm not sure it really. You know, it helps some ways that it can stain the model, and it's it's easy. It's kind of foolproof, but wastes a lot of paint and um, time too, because it takes a long time to clean clean up. Uh, the model. So, um, not always a big fan of that method. Let's go with some brown around here. Yeah, brown color is cool. 
got a nice glossy mist of color. It's working really well for us here. Okay, I go a bit quiet here. You know, I'm in the zone. You can tell when the old Linkster's in the zone because I start, you know, it's hard to talk and, and, uh, and think and be creative. One thing I wanted to point out, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, choose a way to handle your model. Whoop, way off camera. Uh, you can put it up on a block, uh, which I'm going to do for my next one because, you know, I, I go in between doing it and not doing it, but either choose a way so that you don't fingerprint the bloody thing um, or put it up this on a block. nice and thick, actually. I quite like this, this product so far. I think I've used it before. I just can't remember. There's some places where it doesn't run, not to fear. Just add some around like that and we can come back. So why didn't I put this one on a block? I, uh, I thought I'd better mention that one for you as well. If you... Why come back with some thinner and work it around? Thank you, Link. If you're going to keep the suit flexible and uh, use it for, for other purposes, right? Because if you're planning it for a diorama or you just, you just want it as a, uh, as a cool, flexible toy when you're finished, be careful with putting it up on a block because it'll flop around and uh, it's really hard to control and paint because um, you, know, you don't have a, a secure way to hold it. So when they're flexible, I keep them like this. You can see it's already giving the model a lot of depth. So pick two or three places that you can put on uh, that, don't, that you don't need weathered straight away and uh, make sure your fingers go there nowhere else. Next, what I'll do is put that down for a moment and I'll show you what I do with the, the thinner tend to go with a smaller brush for the application and maybe a slightly bigger one. This is what I used for uh, some of the uh, layering of the paint and you can use this one to feather and stretch it around. I probably put way too much out there so what I'll do is and then you're kind of you're, you're half you're half cleaning up and helping stretch the, the paint around in different different areas. Now I've got to jump in here and help myself because during some of the creative processes here I can't talk and do this at the same time. So the, the, vo the voice and the audio quality, sorry it's going to shift because you know here I am mumbling to myself while I'm painting this and now I'm talking at it, watching it back with you. It's kind of like uh, you know doing your own DVD commentary. The, um, the process is uh, it's both additive and subtractive at the same time, uh, uh, you know in, in subsequent steps. So you, know, you add it in and you take it off you can't mess it up. Now the good thing is, if you take too much of it out at this stage, you just put it back in. I mean, you can rinse and repeat this and keep doing it uh, over and over until you get it right. So one of the things I remember starting out thinking, okay, this is something I do once. What do I do next? Uh, if it doesn't have the right look that I'm after, do it again. There you go, stretch it down. Get some streaking effects in there. Well said, Link. Streaking effects, yeah. So I'm trying to pull down most of the time. And we'll see how that goes as it dries. Just want to take it nice and nice and simple. It's a stress-free sort of part of the process. Easy for you to say it's stress-free. Even if it appears to dry, you can come back and rework it. It's all good. Yeah, again, easy for you to say, mate. I remember a couple of spots here that were a bit dry and difficult to rework again, but. Uh, I might leave that for the advanced video for spots that are, you know, I want to keep this one simple. But watching it here though, really key, you've got to have that glossy finish. You can work off matte, but it'll stick. It to some other places that haven't had the treatment yet. I mean, it's starting to add a lot of interest there to the back of our model already. Mm. It's already nice and three-dimensional, but that adds a lot of depth. There we go, that will help that run around that detail. Nice. Okay, talking back over the top again, I can't, I can't shut up. The um, I'm still learning a lot about video production here, so I can boost the gain. Give that a bit of a spread around. Don't want to interrupt myself. I can boost the gain on the audio, right? Uh, it's possible, but because it was recorded as a single track, 
uh, it also boosts that background noise and it just happened to be it sounded like uh, I think it must have been raining when this was happening there was a bit of background round noise sorry about that guys again this is all part of the learning process not only, not only am I learning how to shoot models for it but learning how to uh, to capture and get the sound as well top of the model I do a lot more streaking and pulling the paint in various directions then you can't do that on the top um, th this is where it's kind of like a tank in the way we go about it so pat it and stretch it around horizontally different drying times will give you slightly different effects but generally speaking it's not a big deal yeah, so uh, the, the, the top parts of it, I kind of pat it around in a circular... Let's work at a speed that's comfortable for you. <laughs> Stippling type motion. Stop interrupting, Link. I, I stipple it around, uh, but then with the, uh, the vertical uh, sections, we, uh, we, we, we move it to, uh, to make, uh, make vertical streaks. It's one of the challenges of our mecha robot type uh, genre is that tanks, the verticality component, it, it's very small. It's just the sides of the tank. Uh, maybe some of the turret but with our suits we've got um, depending on the shape uh, horizontals and uh, and verticals so it's a big mix now that's a hatch so nice and greasy is good you want to leave some of this to look like it's spilled out get rid of any hard edges yep Nice and oily, there we go. Yep, definitely. Got to have it nice and oily for, for the hatch areas. And these things up the top, I mean, these details that look like they would uh, be areas that the crew would be working on when they're repairing it, they're going to catch a lot of stuff. I mean, you've always got to have half of your mind on what will make the model look cool, but giving it some nod towards a realistic idea. So, um, you know, I'm not too deep into it, but I do look at it and think, well, like these, these little, they look like uh, skid rails or uh, protection pieces up on top, right? We'll see how that starts drying and come back and have a look. Moving along, we're doing pretty well. Basic outlining done. And, uh, you know, you could call it quits there. It's looking looking all right. What I want to do is I want to uh, improve the, the coherency, uh, make the, the, the decals blend in. And um, what I'm going to do is, is repaint them to match match that I think uh, you don't want too many colors on your model uh, you don't want it to be confusing so what I'm going to do is just go back with uh, off-white oh, this doesn't need to be lacquer I just happen to have that and uh, I've used it before uh, it doesn't melt decals and uh, I, I like the glossiness of this one so I'm gonna go with that the um, I've got a little bit of thinner in there already and I'm going with a with a new brush here because I want it to be pretty pointy. I think let's run down into the palette already while I was setting up. Should be okay. Looks a little thin. Uh, I'll just test it out. Make sure we're nice and focused here for a close up. I think okay, it is a little thin. But uh I'll just block it in first, and then we'll come back for a sharp outline. I'll probably need to sit down. I, I'm standing up painting around the camera for this. So what I'll do is I'll sit down in a moment to um, to block that in nicely. I can't do my best detail work standing up in front of the camera. So yeah, I just build up a little bit of white in the center. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Anything that goes over, I'll come back with a bit of thinner and clean it up, but it'll be pretty easy. Um, acrylic's not bad for this either. Oh, there we go, and that's how I'm going to show you cleaning up. It's a nice soft brush, and easy. Main thing is you've got to move quick. If you uh, spill that, get it in a bad spot, move quick. loaded on the brush okay the main 
ourselves in there. Now I'm going to sit down for a minute and concentrate to get this nice and sharp. Now in putting on, uh, in, in hand painting your own decals, you know, there's kind of a fine line. If you put them on perfectly, they're going to look like de decals. And, um, you know, it can be a good look uh, for some things, but in other ways, you know, I, I kind of like, personally, I like the look as if the, uh, you know, the suit pilots have painted it on themselves, uh, which is usually the case. So, any of these places, I want it reasonably straight, but not perfect. But you can see I've kind of come out, I'm just, I'm not sure how this will show up on the video, but explaining it will probably be the best way so um, any places where it hasn't made a straight line I can clean it back with a little bit of thinner and I'm running it backwards and forwards like this and gradually walk that line in until it takes off and a little bit of that outside edge it took off a little bit extra there but actually that's not a bad look either uh, it looks like it's chipped off and um, do a little bit off the bottom just to clean it up a little Make it a bit more even. Well, that's good. And a little bit off the inside here. Make sure the gloss is not glaring in the camera there. There we go. I don't want it too solid white either. Um, I want it so that it's... It looks slightly worn. That's looking okay. A little bit off the bottom. Just a little bit off here. A little bit off the edge here. And we're good. Yeah, I like that. L for Uncle Stinky Link. Okay, for what I would consider maybe the final the final step in uh, some basic weathering would be would be a quick dry brush and maybe dotting on um, some some quick details. Now, one of the ways I really like to do it is uh, lacquer paint. It's it's not forgiving, but uh, but it is fast and dries really quickly. So um, I've got the one that I've got the propeller color in from before. Okay, and it's it's very similar to to mahogany. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more red and um, brilliant color. What I do is, uh, while this is in there, I, I pour in a little bit of thinner and let it sit for a few minutes and it starts to soften it up and it reactivates the paint. Now, um, you need to mix the paint. So this, this, this little hack kind of saves me a bunch of time, reactivates the paint and it's all good. So I get a brush that, that's had a bit of damage done to it. Now, you keep your old brushes, never chuck them out. Now, what this is good for, number one is the mixing. So I mean, you need a brush for mixing it up anyway. And then make sure those underlayers, you see how they, you can start to see the white. That's why it's good to have a white uh, dish. You can tell when it's thoroughly mixed. Uh, you want it pretty thick. And then, because you're wiping off a lot of it anyway. Um, and the fast drying nature of the, uh, the lacquer paint is brilliant for this. Because, um, for dry brushing. Because you just want a little bit to go on. I see how that's mostly off. That's how I test it. Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. One of the easiest ways to start off, I think, is your feet. Because um, you want them to be the dirtiest. And it's hard to mess them up. Now, I'll just drag it back up the back of the legs a little bit there. That's already, yeah, that's a good look. It's a little bit streaky. And you can test how wet the paint is on your brush. Um, engine, engine rocket nozzle places. Uh, cool place for this uh, up the back of the suit like that and what it does is it catches on the outer edge of it and it gives you a little bit of streakiness love the streaks and because it's kind of thin you can see it it it, it dries like you can't call that a glaze but it's probably what some people would work to achieve uh, via a glaze right A little bit of upward streaking there from the base of that. Maybe a bit here. Run the brush narrow. Narrow vector there, a bit more on the feet. And you can see it's slightly discoloring the feet. And I love this technique. It's super fast and super effective. It looks awesome. And it's really, really easy. 
just be careful don't make it too samey in places make sure you give it a bit of variation so all these techniques I'll show you they look super easy but it's the application of them that uh, now the next one up is the stab look at that see it's like, it's like a, it's a stamp right because there's a little bit of paint left on the end of the bristles puts in a bit of like random detail in spots where it's otherwise a little bit blank I think that looks nifty a couple of downward streaks here upwards here just carefully at the top of the suit these ones on the armor I like to give it a bit of a motion vector Actually, that looks nifty as well as a as an upward one just a little helps to edge it a little too yep that looks great yeah, now if it gets on a bit rough sometimes I use my thumb like that give it a bit of a rub looks okay you don't want to overdo it with this one uh, it could look pretty overdone pretty quick especially on a spacesuit so you know, exercise restraint with your most powerful techniques, you can't go too hard on them. There we go, Little some vectors. We're looking pretty good. Yep, looking all right. And we're done, we're good. But what's that? You want more? Panel line washers, filters, how to use them. How to augment the base color of your paint? Dust. Anyone? No. Dust. And oil paints. The real master's touch. We've been using these for a thousand years and there's a really good reason why. So this will all be next in advanced weathering. See ya.